this morning started off really chilly and uh, it's been a good morning so far. Last night I started working on this log and I challenged myself to get an 8x12, 25 feet long out of this guy. And I'm, I'm well on my way. I will say I probably have had to overthink this a little bit, but it seems like <laughs> it's always by the narrowest of margins. Of course, a little bit of weighing probably not gonna hurt anybody, but this log is so heavy that I can't even rotate it by myself. Alyssa has to come out and barely between the two of us do we have enough strength. Today our goal is to try to even make a, a noticeable dent in this log pile. But I have to say that I think in our whole frame, I think there's like 10 pieces like this. Worth mentioning, all of this lumber, I'm actually not trying to create lumber. This is a byproduct of creating these beams. And this wood is absolutely stunning. So today's gonna be a sawmill day. I think the biggest lesson I can share already this morning is that our logger said, number one tip, don't get in a hurry. And I, and I totally understand what he means, but I think the, the reality of it is a little bit different. I think if I were to get in a little bit bigger hurry, this could go from an eight by 12 to an eight by 10 in a hurry. I have a lot to learn today about adjusting the log to make the proper cut that you want through. And then of course, knowing how much to take off of one side before you rotate it and then take some off and then rotate it and take some off and rotate it. If you take a bunch of stuff off this side right now, you're effectively reducing the width of this lumber. So if I can, I'm better taking off the biggest pieces I can off the top of this and then reducing this side this way. That way I've got some of the nicest lumber I can get. The other problem I've already run into today is that this is so, so clear that when I mill this, I'm getting a 28 foot piece of lumber. And I'm just not strong enough to move a 28 foot long, two by 14 or an inch and a half by 14 slab that is green. So I'm having to make strategic plans to trim these down to usable lengths and movable lengths. Something I learned pretty quickly when we were dealing with the phantom sawmill cutting weird issue. That little bit of sawdust right there. Oh, that's frustrating. Apparently the sound of my voice <laughs> made that timber fall over. This little bit of sawdust right here is enough to ruin your accuracy. So when you're rotating the timber, you need to clean all that sawdust off the top because otherwise when you roll it over it accumulates and then your timber does that all the way down your sawmill. I think <clears throat> this is going to become our ridge beam. Excuse me, part of our hat, part of our ridge beam. We actually have a scarf joint because we cannot mill a 36 foot beam. Well, I just spent probably the better part of an hour calibrating again. This end of the beam down here had Mm, probably on the conservative side a quarter of an inch gap underneath of it and so well I know it was a quarter of an inch because what's happening is kind of what was happening before except it's a little different shape but we're getting untrue timbers so it's 13 inches thick on this end and 13 and a quarter on that end so I think there's your quarter inch which is not good that's not acceptable I don't think so I spent quite a bit more time going through and I think what's frustrating is I'm using the four foot level and you just can't tell in four feet if you're off by a 30 second or not so I used the cut from this beam to try to true up the sawmill and in the end I had a high spot in the middle 
that's what was causing it and it was maybe a maybe an eighth of an inch which is creating this cantilever i think the challenge with this sawmill for us is going to be that these logs are big we don't really have a way to be super delicate so we're jostling the sawmill all the time and i know that for precision in 28 feet you're gonna have to spend some time. I think we had mentioned in our post video that a couple of our bed sections appeared to be miscalibrated and at this point I'm not, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure that out because we're cutting this, this one beam here is actually sitting on one of the bed sections that we thought was off and so I'm not sure. We're gonna keep working with it but I think I have to say that either way, you know, Woodmiser's support has been awesome. They offered to ship out two bed sections immediately to make sure that we're taken care of. I mean, we're, at this point, we'd rather buy a couple of bed sections if we have to, to get this timber frame cut. It's more important and we'll figure out to do it the bed sections later. Anyway, so we're gonna give this a shot and uh, we're a one cut away from our first eight by 12. to anchor seal these today. Yeah. sorts of crazy things going on with it. I don't know if you can see it's kind of like snaking and the butt comes up like crazy so we're thinking we might just take the chainsaw and cut this sucker in half. Yeah I think if, if we do really good it's it's got really good wood in it but we might be able to get like two uh let's see so there's 10 foot so we're only gonna lose maybe about four feet on the end maybe you know what's really good news about that? Five braces. Feet. Braces. Mm. Can I interrupt you for a minute? We had some visitors stop by and Kelsey brought us fresh pressed apple juice or cider technically nice. and homemade caramel sauce oh, yeah. which is amazing 
And this is the recipe from her blog. See, and Kelsey knows that if you don't eat, you get hangry. Oh, yeah, I know. This is you like the grumpy. best thing she could have brought us. It's like the um, fifth time we've mentioned that in a video. I know. Kelsey hasn't caught on yet. Okay, so be careful. It's a little warm, but it's amazing. our bounty. Ooh, we're looking pretty good. I'm actually, I'm happy. I yeah. feel like I was worried about how today would turn out, but I think, are you happy? I'm pretty happy. Yeah. So we got one 11 or 12 foot piece of brace stock. So we can make two five foot braces out of that. And then we got two eight by eight posts. Both of those will be short posts. So we're kind of chewing up our short posts pretty quick. Well, not really. We need a bunch in the 11 range and uh, one of those will be 11 range and then this one will be a 10 footer. That one back there will also be in the 11 range. So. That's our Instagram worthy, do you think? Timber piles growing. Probably the biggest trophy yet Can is the, the eight by 12. Yep. I'm pretty sure to get a timber frame, we're gonna have to be to like here, like semi truck load. So we got a long way to go. Man, look at the sky we have tonight. So beautiful. Hardly time to enjoy it though. I don't know if you've shared this yet, but as we go, we're trying to check off what we've done. Yeah. As far as our cut list goes. I doubt this is visible, but I went through and I created a list of every dimension and every piece and I gave it an um, alphanumeric number. So as I go, I'm marking the end of each piece with its alphanumeric code and then I'm bolding whatever that piece is. Because I feel like you can't just say we need 13 of these. Well, no, it's not that simple. I can't cut 13 of anything. I've got to cut one of these, one of those, one of these, Right, one of those, you have to work these, through your log pile yeah. in a way that makes sense and you have to get the most out of each lumber. So what's hard is you can't just cut all your posts yeah. and then all your floor joists. You have to like, yeah, jump around. I'm hoping that this will kind of become eight by eights and this will become floor joists and this will become like tie beams and It's good to have a plan stuff. so that the plan can change. Right. But, but for the plan to change, you have to have a plan. No, true. That's why that's why plans change because you plan. If you don't have a plan, there's nothing to change, right? Um, so I say we get a log on the mill. Yeah. And then see where we're at. We're gonna lose daylight. Yeah, about we are. Twenty minutes. Yep. Um, I think today was pretty productive. That eight by twelve was a big success. It made me feel really good. I'm pretty sure we can ask Ethan, but I'm sure pretty sure that's the hardest one to cut because it's 25 feet and it's eight by 12. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm hoping that's the I'm hoping we got the the big daddy out of the way first. Um, I can uh, I'll tag shelter okay. in the Instagram post. Yeah, we it was kind of fun today because we had some friends come by that had some kids and we got to mill with them a little bit. It's hard because we're trying to focus on like it was one thing when we were just milling trees for fun, mm -hmm. but it's another thing when you have to hit like certain measurements. And we know from the timber frame workshop if these timbers aren't reasonably square, how much of a nightmare oh, it's yeah. going to be during the workshop. So we are trying really hard to make sure their dimension and they're square and straight. And it takes a lot of focus because it feel like this the littlest thing, yeah. like a little of sawdust can ruin an entire eight by 12 beam. That's that's really how much focus it takes. On that note. Mexican? Oh, log. Log. log.
What's the booty on that thing? This is 31 inches. Dang. We can't even, I don't think we can even cut that wide. I think our maximum cuts 28 inches, really? but what'll happen it's is we'll just huge. cut a little off here, cut a little <laughs> off there and get it down yeah. to 28. But we're not, I mean, we're not even gonna be able to lift this log complete as a whole log. That was right at max yeah. for the backhoe. We uh, gave our sawmill a good yoink, so I don't know. I don't know. Yank. I'd love to know if we, you need to be this anal with well, I calibration think... all the time. Or I guess in theory, you have a nice level of concrete pad that you're working on. If we have to. Pour a concrete pad? We'll throw some forms up and we'll pour a pad because, you know, if, if we have to do this every single time, it'll save us five days by yeah. pouring a pad. Yeah, I mean, it's every log. Like we can't, you can get it on there, but you gotta be able to move it a little bit and the whole sawmill just goes <laughs> Flying. In fact, I think it might even all, almost be up. Oh wow, yeah it is. We have like air under all of those legs. Yeah, she slid pretty close wow. to the edge. Wow, that's, that's pretty bad. That would be bad for Biz. That would be very bad. Grr. She's still on there though. This log, man, how, how are we not gonna get a monster out of this? Yeah, Look at this. Freaking it's, huge. it's really hard to tell on camera. It's straight and it's huge. What's the booty on this guy? It's 20 inches. It's a 20 inch diameter there. So it looks a lot brighter on camera than it does out here. We're gonna wrap up for the evening. There's only enough daylight left to put our tools away. And then we'll hit it in the morning. And start getting through all of these. No pressure. We're slowly getting the bugs worked out, but I wouldn't say we've got the bugs worked out. I feel like the grapple was worth every penny. Oh yeah. I feel like rotating, like on the big long ones, uh-uh. So we still gotta come up with a system. Maybe it's just a two man job and we gotta rotate logs. So probably like everything, about the time we get done making this timber frame, we'll, we'll start getting it. good enough. Oh yeah, somebody's gonna mill up all that lumber over there too. It's just getting to be a wobbly stack of death. 